couple with a brick Brew and a friend bleed orange and blue to the bitter end Come and join us, DDNVR We are DNVR We are DNVR and we are live from Studio B The B stands for Big disappointment boring <laughs> oh yes you should help me out with that one b stands for boring we'll talk about why here in just a second but first i want to give a shout out to our friends over at msu denver msu denver online is the number one place in colorado to get your education online and you can do it from outside of colorado as well even better is that MSU Denver students work twice as many hours as students attending any other college institution. So if you're looking to keep a full-time job while you are, uh, keep a full-time job while you're going to school, there's no better place to do it than MSU Denver. Check them out, msudenver.edu slash online. My boy, Ryan, what is up, my friend? And that will do it for the DNVR Broncos podcast today because nothing happened at training camp today, Ryan. Well, the first day with pads, you had a little bit of hitting. You finally had some one-on-ones, especially the big guys. But in terms of the big story, Ryan, the quarterback competition, today was the first day that there wasn't really any major huge takeaways. It it was a day that truly was a push in my eyes and many people's eyes uh, because Vic Fangio got the pads on and he wanted to run the darn ball. So that's what they did. It was two two runs and a pass, two runs and a pass, two runs and a short pass, two runs and a check down. Those are the worst. Those are the (laughs) worst, Zach. Um, Ryan, that's why I think tomorrow is going to be very exciting. I got it. Or Vic just says, nope, this is who we are. I've told you guys we're going to be a running team, and so I'm going to keep it like this. Yes, as um, Mace has said 374 times on the podcast, uh, the Broncos are going to butter their bread with the running game mm, this year. Not uh, not cornbread or anything? Have you ever done the honey honey butter on cornbread? Have I ever done honey <laughs> butter on cornbread? Where, what do you think I've, where I'm from? No, what you really do, you take a cornbread muffin. Okay, yep. You make sure you have clean hands. Yep. Stick your finger, make a little hole, fill it with honey. Oh, I like. So, are you are you uh, digging it out? No, or... you just gotta press it in. Oh, but then you kind of get the mush. You no. know, it turns into corn mush. No, not if you have a good cornbread muffin. Oh, it just compacts. Yeah, exactly. It just okay. like makes the bottom a little more dense. So instead of a uh, donut hole that's filled with something, mm-hmm. it's a corn, cornbread, corn honey. Mm. Not gonna say the, the last word. Um. Anyways, <laughs> what? It's nothing. Um. <laughs> Okay, so kind of a boring practice today. Quickly just take us through. I know it's not a salacious day for quarterbacks, but give us just the breakdown of what you saw from the quarterback. Both quarterbacks, Ryan, efficient, and that's what you want. I mean, we knew Teddy was going to be that type of quarterback, but just the rate at which he's completing passes, Ryan, is pretty unheard of. In fact, I think I even asked you uh, a couple of days ago when you were out of practice, I said, Ryan, is it normal to be completing like 80%, 90% of your passes out here at camp? Because not only is Teddy doing it, but for the most part, Drew's been doing that as well. And you said, no, that's not how it was. When Case was really good, he wasn't even doing that. So Teddy, again, extremely efficient, only had one or two balls hit the ground, and one of them was a drop today. So efficient. Any deep balls today? Nope. He did those yesterday, so he went back back down to uh, you know not really throwing much past the 10-yard line. Drew, he followed in Teddy's shoes. He said, I threw two interceptions yesterday. I'm not going to throw the ball deep. He did not throw the ball deep, so he didn't have any big completions. Um, just a, a little more frazzled in the pocket than Teddy today, but that's something that we've seen. But Drew does have the wheels in order to, to, to turn it on and buy him some more time. We saw that a couple of times he did that today. And probably his best play of the day on a third and five, uh, Jerry Judy got open on an, on an in route on the outside going up against Ronald Darby. He got the ball there 10 yards downfield for the first down. It, it, that That's what we're talking about for the play of the day from the quarterbacks, Ryan. That just shows you kind of a, a routine 10-yard pass. And to Jerry Judy, anyone's completing passes to him. But Drew was also efficient. Didn't have many balls hit the ground. And Ryan, just to recap and show you how boring of a day it was from the quarterback's perspective, 
multiple times, I want to say three or four times, each quarterback practiced throwing the ball out of bounds. I mean, we had that. And then, just to absolutely confirm that that's what we were seeing and not just both of these guys absolutely losing their minds out there, Pat Shermer said it today. He said, in case you guys didn't catch on, you know, it's hard to evaluate sometimes because you don't know what's going on, but we were practicing throwing the ball out of bounds. It's like, oh, phew, because that would have been really bad if not. <laughs> yeah, so here's what I want to ask you as it relates to that. I've heard in some places, mostly in college, they'll actually give the media the schedule of what they're doing that day. Mm-hmm. Why not? Smart, isn't it? Yes. And Unless you're hiding. And what are you hiding? What are you hi- uh, that you worked on throwing the ball out of bounds right. that day? <laughs> exactly. Because there may be, there's probably some fans out there that didn't know that that's what happened. It didn't catch uh, Pat Shermer on the podium after that are saying, oh my goodness, what am I watching? Yeah. Just give the media, it doesn't have to be like in depth. Right. Just this, the schedule of what's right. happening. Period one, we're working on this. Period two is red zone. Period three is special teams. Period four, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And you can say, the last one can say like special situations, spiking the ball, taking right. a knee, throwing the ball out of bounds. Yep, yep. It, it definitely, I think they definitely should. Uh, but that's the type of offensive practice that we're talking about today, Ryan. And that just shows you what today was. It was, you know, making sure the quarterbacks weren't going to ruin practice, which they certainly didn't. Uh, and then getting the pads on. Now, where there, there, there was one kind of big hit that happened, Josh Watson seemed to lay out Albert O on a play, and I thought things were going to blow up because, I mean, he blew him up on a screenplay, five-yard loss. Albert O, you see him on the ground with his knee. You're like, oh, no, what is Josh Watson doing? And Vic Fangio after practice said when he was walking over to, I imagine, chew the heck out of Josh Watson, he said the offensive guy said he was pushed into him. So Mm. not intentional. However, before we even had a team period, Ryan, we had two injuries today. Dayon Sizer, a defensive lineman, went off with, with uh, I believe, a knee injury. Uh, And you had Conway, a backup offensive lineman, who seems to have uh, a pretty bad ACL injury. You hate seeing it, and it's just crazy that that's what pads mean. Okay, can I just be the glass half full guy for a second? <laughs> yeah, I know where you're for going. Guy Conway here. <laughs> yeah. Most oh, yeah. people listening right now have never heard of who that person is. Yep. Do you know his first name? Christian? A close, close. With a K or a C? What do you mean? With the C, right, I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cody. Oh, okay. Um, he was going to be out of a job here very soon. Yep. The injury sucks. Yeah. He's going to get paid now. Yep. He gets an injury settlement. At, at worst, yeah. he gets a, They pay him a, a, a settlement of money that says, like, we're sorry you got injured. Here's some money. Yep. Um, best case, he goes on IR and just stays with the team for the whole season. It's true. Yeah, if they really want to hook him up, that's what they do. So it's not the end of the world. Yeah. Um, obviously, it just sucks for anyone to get hurt, though. Yeah, it does. And Garrett Bowles was the only guy to go over to him and kind of shake his hand as he was being carted off. He went across the field, so it wasn't like everyone just ignored him. But Garrett Bowles showed some respect there. And speaking of Garrett Bowles, Ryan, we haven't talked about him because that's a good thing. When you don't talk about offensive linemen, and today when the pads come on, it's really when you start to get to evaluate these guys. He looked really good an individual period, and uh, we know how Von Miller has kind of ruined Garrett Bowles in the past during these individual periods. Not today. Von wasn't doing as many individuals as everyone else, but the offensive linemen were kind of getting steamrolled in these individual blocking drills, not Garrett Bowles. Great to hear. And and Garrett, weirdly enough, still isn't getting enough credit. Yeah. Uh, And why is that? Personally, I think it's because everyone's take about Garrett Bowles was so wrong mm-hmm. that there's like a, still a little bit of guarded respect that's being sent his way. Like, you, me, right. Mace, anyone, yeah. we were all very, very, very wrong about Garrett Bowles. Like, 
Von Miller might be right. He might be a top five <laughs> left tackle in the game right now. He said the best. He said he's the best. And then he actually See, later you, you're said... still hesitant no, about No, I think he said he's the best, and then he later said top five, or maybe he said top three. Right, yep. yep. I, oh, no, what he yeah, said is what he he's said. top three, and he isn't three. <laughs> right, exactly. So top two, then, yeah, so he's is, top two. Is, is what he's calling him. Uh, and something else, when you have conversations, whether it's with other media members, Ryan, or whether it's with uh, um, you know fans... About half the time you talk about Garrett Bowles and, you know, how good he can be. People do say, specifically other media members, they do say, well, you know, holdings were down last year. I wonder how that's going to impact him this year. So, to your point, a lot of people still are very... Guarded optimism. Yes, yes, exactly. Okay, so here's what I want to do with you. Instead of just you giving me a couple guys whose stock is up and stock is down, oh. I want to go through a lot of the roster quickly. And you give me stock up, stock down, stock neutral. Okay. 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 Um, just, I, just fast fire. Yes. I've only seen a couple of practices, so I'm, we're just going to go with your analysis mm. here because you've been with every single one. So let's just start with the quarterbacks. Yep. And this, if you want to expand a little bit on these guys, you can expand more. Drew Locke. Stock up. Yeah. I was going to say his stock has to be up. As, as someone who still believes in Drew Locke, I was worried that six practices through camp, people could be pressing the panic button on him. That is definitely not the case. No, no, there, there's no panic button. Yesterday was his his worst day uh, by far, coupled, I guess, with Fridays for different reasons. But the fact that it took him five practices, Ryan, to throw his first interception in team and seven on seven, that certainly shows you decision-making is up. And look, after practice, Pat Shermer said it kind of, silly when you really dive into it but he said this is the best drew lock i've seen and it should be because should be. drew lock last year wasn't that good uh but and and that's all he saw was drew lock last year but the fact that he is taking those steps where everyone can legitimately say he's better than last year just means he's trending in the right direction teddy bridgewater neutral yeah i, I would say because teddy we knew if drew was the drew he was last year teddy was going to win this job mm -hmm. pretty easily now we got a competition because Teddy, he has shown the deep ball specifically yesterday, uh, and he's shown that he can be be steady, but, you know, he's shown that he is who he is. He's definitely who he is. And honestly, I don't know if his stock will ever go up or go down. Yeah, it's it's really true. All right, Melvin Gordon. Um, stock neutral. Well, yep. slightly up. Okay, why slightly up? He, he looks... Better than he did last training camp. I mean, he looks like he knows where he's going. He, he just looks stronger. Javante Williams, who people loved seeing out there in the pads today. Yes, stock up, definitely. I mean, he looks so far like the guy that they traded up for. Mike Boone? Up, up. Mike Boone, you can't tell when he's in there. Like, you can't tell that the starters aren't on the field. And sorry to whoever tweeted this. I always forget who tweeted what. Someone tweeted today, like, what Bronco are you higher on than everyone else? Like, who is your guy? I think my guy's Mike Boone. I think he's going to be a lot of people's. Yeah. I'm already mad that he's not getting more carries. They haven't even played a game yet. <laughs> and I'm saying, why didn't he get more carries in that game? Really quick, speaking of carries, something that is blowing my mind, Ryan, and it's kind of blowing everyone's mind out there at Broncos camp specifically today, is when it came to a bubble. Brett Rippon is getting a lot of snaps. I mean, I don't want to go all the way and say he's getting 33% of the snaps. He's getting 25, 27% of the snaps, and I don't understand. If you have a quarterback battle, it's got to be like 45, 45, and 10, or 47 and a half, 47 and a half, and five. It's blowing my mind. What a waste. Uh, I, I normally won't go four deep on any position, but Royce Freeman neutral because I think everyone knew he's the uh, he's the odd man out coming in. Cortland Sutton. Trending, in my mind, trending a little down. Because now, it he that could all flip tomorrow, Ryan. And But I just, I thought the progression was going to be a little quicker. We've seen him out there, and he's been solid, but he hasn't been amazing. I don't think he's had one wow play of camp. I was going to say, I haven't, I didn't see it when I was there. I haven't seen it when I was there, and I didn't see. I haven't seen it on social either of like, oh no. my gosh, Cortland's back. No, and so it, it concerns me a tiny bit. Okay. Uh, Tim Patrick. Trending up. Okay. Because Ryan, he is he's showing with Cortland Sutton out that he can be a legitimate two, a very good number two in this league. Tyree Cleveland. Trending down. 
And uh, Ryan, I think he's had one catch in training camp. He's had more. Four drops. He's had more drops than catches. I can guarantee that. And this was a guy who I thought was close to being almost a lock to make the team mm. earlier. That is no longer the case. I, I didn't ever think he was a lock just because there's a lot of competition at that position. But Mason and I talked about this the other day. It's a what have you done for me lately league. Right. And he's no longer the young, exciting prospect at wide receiver. That's now Seth Williams. Right. You definitely can't play your way off the team when you're in his position. There's someone younger, fresher, more exciting than you. You can't be dropping the ball three. I think he has three, at least three drops. Yep, and big ones too. Uh, yeah. Some big time catches that he hasn't dropped. I thought he was, you know, you kind of have the guys that are locks to make the team. I thought he was at the top of the next tier below. Now, Trinity Benson may be in that spot. And we'll get to him in a second. But next is Jerry Judy. Oh, my gosh. Probably trending higher than anyone else in Broncos camp right now, Ryan. Is the stock even affordable at this point? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> if you haven't bought, you're not buying now. No, you're too late. It's like this housing market right now. You're like, it's got to come down at some point, right? But Jerry's just keeps going up. Thankfully, and, and I truly, truly mean this. When everyone else was selling their stock last year, when it dipped, I was just hammering it. Yeah. Just, just taking in globs of Jerry Judy stock at any chance I could get. So, uh, so what you're saying is I'm, you're, re you're retiring soon. Yeah, I, I think I might, um, <laughs> I think I might retire off my Jerry Judy stock. He looks so good. There hasn't been one day, Ryan, where we've said Jerry Judy has been disappointing. He hasn't looked great. He's looked great every single day. I'm trying to figure out how to trade for him in my dynasty fantasy league without it being like obvious mm. because like, Everyone in the league knows that I know. Right. You know? Right. And I don't think... Is it a bunch of Broncos fans too? Not all, but mostly. Okay. And I think he's on a Broncos fans team. Yeah. And like, I'm trying to figure out like, how can I make this trade? Like, I, I know he's... Everyone's hearing how good he looks. Right. I'm like, how can I do this trade without like really overpaying? <laughs> oh, right. You're going to have to overpay. Does it? Does this person listen to the pod? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Well, there you go. Yes, exactly. Um, The other thing here is speaking of... Stocks. I'm not even gonna. I'm not gonna mention the name of the brand because I don't remember it. But a, a brand reached out to me recently, and their concept is you can actually buy stock in players. Yep. Yep. And you, I, we would both be buying stock in Jerry Judy. Just hammering it. Yes. And it, it, he's been he's been so good, Ryan. Right now, he's the only guy that I would comfortably pick up in fantasy for this year on the Broncos offense because Cortland Sutton. It, I just don't think Cortland Sutton's going to fall in fantasy drafts. If he does, great value there. Tim Patrick, we don't really know how many targets he's going to get. Running backs is not just two deep. They are three deep. Jerry Judy, we, he's he's a thousand yard receiver this year. Someone mentioned that um, Drew threw a deep ball to Cortland one day. Was that like a big play by Cortland? No. Okay. No, it, it, I think it fell right into his, his arms. Okay. Um, Seth Williams. <sighs> down oh uh maybe maybe neutral um he is a seventh round rookie so i'll say neutral he just hasn't done much for me right uh, in, again you can kind of notice just by names that are being mentioned yeah like everyone wants to mention these guys because right. they know people are excited about the rookies they've still got you know he's still got the following from auburn so if he makes a play it's, it's gonna mention it's gonna oh, be yeah. mentioned haven't seen it and this next guy you've seen his name pop up a lot trinity benson and definitely up Definitely up. He has now leaped both of those guys in my book. Is this his third year or fourth year with the Broncos? He's been in camp a while. He has. I think it's his third year. Two two rookie or practice squad yep. years. And uh, that would be an awesome, just like NFL success story, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Go undrafted. You come into a camp. You hang on tight enough to make the practice squad. You go back the next year again. You're not quite ready for the team. You stay on the practice squad. And same coach all three years, by the mm -hmm. way. You finally break through. You finally get it. I hope he makes the team. It would be a great story. It, it really would. It'd be like a uh, uh, a Kendall Hinton light story. Yes. All right. We got to move a little bit faster here to get through the uh, offense here in the first segment. So we'll go uh, rapid fire from here on out unless there's something really important. KJ Hamler. <sighs> Trending up when he's on the field yeah. uh today covid protocol he could be back tomorrow he could be out 10 weeks or not 10 weeks 10 days to two weeks we'll find out more tomorrow we don't know 
what it is. They're evaluating him now. I told you, I don't, th- I don't know if it's the worst thing if he's not playing, if he's not practicing. We know he can make plays when he's on the field. I don't want him to get hurt. He won't get hurt if he's not pra- – he shouldn't get hurt, yeah, I should say, if he's what? not practicing, right? <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, Deontay Spencer. Um, neutral. Okay. Uh, Kendall Hinton. Trending up. Okay, good. Um, really yeah. quick, really quick. A fun, fun little thing. They ran a little end around with him, and it really lo- – it was blown up in the backfield. But it really looked like Drew Locke was running out for a pass, and I thought, boy, how cool would it be if they allowed Kendall Hinton to complete a pass mm, in a game this year? Love that. Um, Warren Jackson. <sighs> Neutral. Same thing as Seth Williams, right? It's It's been so quiet from the undrafted receiver. But yep. that's kind of what you expect, I guess. No offense. Neutral. Yeah. Uh, he You're hasn't, already high. Yeah, yeah. And he hasn't blown me out of the water. But when he gets the ball, you can see it's there. Alberto. <sighs> Trending up a little bit. Today, Ryan, I was surprised in the first day with pads how much he was on the field. Very encouraged by that. Eric Saubert. Trending up. Yeah. I mean, this is a guy who's probably had more catches of any of the tight ends. The depth chart I'm looking at has Austin Fort listed ahead of him. I don't think that's correct. No, that is not correct. <laughs> I think uh, Salbert's going to make the team as the third tight end. Andrew Beck. Um, They're not really using fullback, so I guess trending down. Prentice? Neutral. Okay. <laughs> I heard he had a big hit today, right? He knocked he did. two people down <laughs> yeah. one block. Uh, Garrett Bowles, we talked about that. Yep. Up. Uh, Calvin Anderson. Up. I mean, he's he's in this competition. Bobby Massey, a third straight day at right tackle. But you saw Calvin Anderson working at left tackle with the number twos, which means they really do believe he can be that uh, versatile backup. Dalton Reisner. Neutral. Okay. Lloyd Cushenberry. Neutral, although, boy, he got... Isn't he got to be up a little bit? Yes, yes, I guess overall he, he is up. You're right. He got steamrolled in an individual drill today. By who? But, um... I don't remember it off the top of my head. I want to so say it was probably. a gym. Okay, okay. Well, he's a strong man. Uh, Quinn Miners. Um, down, because it's not even a competition at center. Yeah, and, and that's kind of what I thought from the beginning. Like, right. before camp started, we were kind of bringing that up, and then I was kind of – I felt validated that Vic Fangio was like, well, Miners is going to have to make it a competition before it's a competition. Right, right. yeah, no competition. Graham Glasgow. Uh, neutral. Natani Muti. Neutral. Mm, bummer. Unfortunately. Yep. Bobby Massey. Uh, trending up. Three straight days. Yeah, it seems like it's his. And then the last one I want to mention on the offense, Cameron Fleming. Trending down. Pretty steeply. Ryan, six practices in. He hasn't got... He has not had a day with the first team. Is that a bad look for George Payton? I, yeah. Yeah, I think so right now. Especially because, like I said, with uh, Calvin Anderson, he's looking to be your swing backup right now. Yep. So uh, I doubt there's a lot of guarantees on that contract. Right. Uh, it's true. I mean, it's not the end of the world. I guess they brought him in. He looked like he was in good shape. Yep. You know, what can you do? Yep, and today he was not practicing. And this was a guy where a lot of people said his best ability was availability last year. We'll get a little bit more of an update tomorrow on just how long he's going to be out. Okay. Uh, before we move on to the defense, I want to give a shout-out to our friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook, where you can bet one to win 100 if either fighter in UFC 265 this weekend just lands a punch. The main event, if one guy lands a punch, you win $100. Trust me, it's going to happen. Dre and I have been over this. The only way it doesn't happen is if it ends on like a flying knee to start or like a roundhouse like it's just not gonna happen they're all you know especially in those title fights no one wants to take big massive risks early so take that bet i mean they're giving you the bet i mean they're giving you the money and to be honest they're not always this easy this one's really easy yes it is very easy something else that's really easy is getting a job With our friends over at Ball, I'm talking about Ball Arena. They want to hire you because they are so busy, so successful. They are making literally hundreds of billions of cans every single year, and they need help on their production line. So what do you do to get a job over with our friends at Ball? Well, text GOLDEN to 77222, and you'll get linked to open positions. You can also go directly to jobs.ball.com and search for GOLDEN. That's jobs.ball.com and and search for golden or simply text golden to 77222 and ball isn't just making so 
mini cans. They're not just the name on the the arena where the the Nuggets and the Avs play, but they are awesome, uh, awesome company and doing awesome things. They're leading global sustainability efforts, uh, and they are just unstoppable over there, Paul. And they want to make you unstoppable. So text Golden to seven seven two 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 to get hooked up with a job for them. All right, and finally, I want to tell you just about what we got going down here at the DNVR bar this weekend. We mentioned UFC. Hopefully, you become a new user. You come down to the DNVR bar for UFC, and then in the first five seconds of the fight, you're celebrating a $100 win. Uh, we are going to have the fight on down here this weekend. It should be an absolute blast. It always is. Um, last time we had a UFC fight on, it got pretty rowdy in here. Mm-hmm. I loved the uh, dynamic because... Don't get me wrong. I love when the whole place is full of Avs fans and we're all cheering on the Avs or the Nuggets or the Broncos. But there's something about like half of the bar is going for McGregor and half the bar was going for Poirier. And like I'm upstairs uh, with Nate Landman and he's going for McGregor and I'm going for Poirier. And there was just like this fun kind of banter going back and forth between the fans. So come on down. It should be really fun. Get some bets in. Have yourself a member beer, get yourself a discount on a shirt, whatever it is. Uh, we've always got cool stuff going on over here. Well, you beat Landman on that one. I did, yes. It's probably the only thing fight related <laughs> that I could beat him in. Who, who do you got this weekend? I haven't decided yet. Okay. I haven't fair. decided yet. So I'll take good. the opposite one. Okay. All right. Are you going to come down to the bar and we can banter about they it? have to. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Let's move on here in our... Um, Breaking down of the stocks on the team. Yes, yes. Stocks up or down. The stock report, as as it were. Uh, Draymond Jones. Up. Yeah. Definitely up his play, what everyone's saying about him. Ryan, people aren't talking about him in the building as an up-and-coming guy. They're talking about him as like a man that is ready to just destroy the league. There's like a, a Pro Bowl aura yeah. around him yep yep almost it, it's kind of jerry judy light uh on draymond jones because it's so obvious with the receivers how good they are it's just not as obvious with draymond but for as obvious as it can be with the defensive lineman he's doing it what's weird about jerry though is it's like a he's going to be mm-hmm. with draymond it's like he is right right well, yeah already weird. he's it's already being r- talked about like, like he's like fully yeah. got the respect yep 100 percent. which is pretty cool yeah uh mctelvin ajim Trending up yep. big time. I mean, he he's just making plays in the run game and the pass game. He's going to be someone that's on the field a lot this year. That's great to hear. Because it's similar to like Jonathan Cooper, right? You take a little mm-hmm. bit of a flyer on a guy you like their athleticism, you hope they can fit in. And if year two, they're already becoming a legitimate contributor, you hit. Yep. All right, Mike Purcell. Trending down. Not even on the field. Injured. And the scheme... Now, look, they're not going to run dime on every play. Sometimes we fall in love with these kind of preseason narratives about how they want to add this, that. But I think they wanted to run dime a lot. I think so. Like we've talked about. And I'm glad we kind of noticed this from watching. They're inventing a position for Pat Sertan. Mm -hmm. And Ed Donatel essentially confirmed that for us today. said, like, we've never put this much on the plate of a rookie. We feel totally comfortable doing so. So, again, they want him on the field. They're inventing a position for him. His position might kind of be at the expense of Mike Purcell's position. Yeah, it very and Ryan, if, if I'm going to decide, I'm putting Sertan out there instead of Purcell, especially Res- all due respect to Purcell, exactly first round pick, and especially when you have big guys like Shelby, Draymond, and Ajim who are playing well. And heck, if you need a big guy because it's third and five, and you think they may run a draw, you can have Purcell out there still. Um, any of these other guys, I'll just group them all together. You tell me if anyone's Shamar, Steven, Deshaun Williams. Deion Sizer. Uh, Deshaun Williams is trending up. Okay. He's a guy that's in that rotation with the first team. Okay, cool. Uh, Shelby Harris. Uh, neutral. You know, Shelby is batting down passes and not neutral in a bad way at all, but Shelby just got paid $9 million a year and he looks like that. Jonathan Harris, Marquis Spencer. Uh, Jonathan Harris, no. Okay. No. Okay. Um, Marquis Spencer. Yeah, anything? trending up a little bit. Okay. For a seventh round pick, he, he's playing better. All right. Um, Bradley Chubb. Uh, mm, neutral. I was almost going to say trending down just because taking him a while to get back out there. He did have some team snaps today. Uh, we've seen flashes from Von Miller this camp. Von's not blowing up every single day, but we've seen flashes. He looks like Von. 
Chubb, haven't seen it yet. So maybe trending down. Okay. I just didn't want to do that to him because of coming back from an injury. I, that's the main reason why. Unfortunately, and I would apply this the same to Drew Locke. And I'll touch wood for both of these guys, but eventually, like injuries start to become a part of your stock, right? Right. right. Yeah. Um. Like if a company CEO was like out every couple of weeks, like their <laughs> stock would take a hit. Right. You know, like. Yeah. Um, I don't want that to be the case, right? But you do have to prove you can be healthy. Honestly, over a sixteen-game sample before we can kind of put that away. Yeah, maybe even seventeen-game sample. God, dang it. <laughs> Um, Derek Tuska, uh, Pita Tamu Penu. Yeah, we're gonna say for all these <laughs> okay. guys, the Trez Patrick. Derek oh. Tuska actually did have a sack today. Uh, it was all him. It was just a great move to get to the quarterback. Love to see it. He is small. He, I mean, he looks bigger than he did right. last year, but he right. is still. He does not look like an NFL outside linebacker. It reminds me of Austin Ford. Anytime Austin Ford is brought up, Vic Fangio mentions how he's undersized. And he just he hasn't been able to shake that for three years. I don't think Tuska is either. Alexander Johnson. Uh neutral. Justin Sernod. Trending up. Yeah. Trending up. Lot of praise coming from Vic Fangio on Justin Sternod. And Ryan, Vic Fangio yesterday said pads come on tomorrow, baby. When asked about how he can evaluate Justin Sternod today in pads, he looked good. He looked really good. Love to hear it. Uh Josie Jewell. Uh trending down. Injury. And Justin. Yep. Rising up. up, And also, some people like to say, you know, when a starter's injured, you can't lose your job to that or something. Vic didn't say those words yesterday, but when asked about Sternod having a big opportunity, he said it can be a big opportunity for Sternod. I hate the, like, you can't lose your job when you're hurt. (laughs) Yes, you can. (laughs) Uh, If I go on vacation and someone has to fill in for me and they do a whole lot better job (laughs) hosting this show, when I get back... And they tell me it's not my job anymore. Like, what? I don't know. That's You know who lost their job to injury? Who? Peyton Manning. Lost his job to injury. Literally fired by the Colts. It's very true. If, very true. if it can, can happen fired. to him, it can happen to anyone. <laughs> yes. um, he, his injury also allowed them to get his replacement. Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, just give us the story. Baron Browning. Oh, man, definitely trending down. Yeah. Today, again, saw him on the sidelines with a uh, a brace on. Yesterday, Vic said he talked to him, and Barron said he was feeling better, but Vic said he still needs to turn a corner. Um, this is something where just a couple days before that, Vic said he had stalled in his recovery. So I'm under the belief you just make him a red shirt. Look, you already have a rising inside linebacker, right? You already mm-hmm. have Justin Sternod uh, proving that that this year could be his breakout year. Why not allow Barron just to sit back, get fully healthy, learn the inside linebacker position this year, and maybe have a Justin Sternod type season next year? Von Miller. Uh, neutral. Malik Reed. Trending up. I like what he's done in the run game. He showed me that he can be an all around player. If that happens, you've got yourself like a multi-million dollar player. Yes, you like do. Several million dollars. And then don't you learn from what happened with Shaq Barrett too? Don't let him go. Yeah, don't let him go. And also, uh, you know, you keep Chubb. And maybe if Vaughn wants some crazy amount that you can't pay or don't want to pay, you let him go. Or just, you know, don't just be stuck by saying we have to have a top five name. How many sacks did Malik Reed have last year? Eight. If he can replicate that and stop the run, he's going to make $8 million. Yes, he will. <laughs> Especially if he's a part-time player getting eight, mil- eight yes. sacks. Um, okay, Jonathan Cooper. Uh, trending up yeah. after today. He had a very good practice. Kyle Fuller. Uh, neutral. Pat Sertan. Trending up big time. I think um, the Broncos are realizing, hey, these Alabama guys. We yes, should get they more are. Of them. Signed one of them this morning. Yeah, exactly. That's what <laughs> yeah. I mean. Is it Savion Smith? Yep. Um, yeah. I just think they're saying like, wow, these guys are great. Keep bringing these guys in. Also, at at what point do you do you realize that these Alabama guys are ready to play when they come in and they're they're not beat down by the NFL strength program. They're not beat down by an NFL training camp. At what point do you say, Okay, we do need to give them a raise. Like, when we're evaluating these guys, let's give them a little tick up. The one thing I will say is that the the counterpoint to that is, like, 
But they don't have as much room to grow because right. they're coming to you as grown men. Right, right. And also you could say that they're worn down a bit, especially as a first round pick. If you want to invest 10, 15 years in a guy, it may be eight to 13 years. That would be the counter. Like, like Quinn Miner's body is so fresh. Yes. <laughs> like, he hasn't had to do anything. He hasn't taken any wear and tear out yep. on the field. He's just been pushing people around for four years. Yep, pushing trees around. Right, yeah. whereas like... Like a guy like Pat Sertan has been like smashing up against some of the biggest, strongest players in the country. Right, right. So um, it is a difference, but I want I, I, we should actually look into this. What team has the most Alabama players, and just rank them and see how who's is is having more Alabama right. players on your team making you a better team? I gotta think the Patriots have a decent amount, so that history would probably sway it. Probably, um, Oge Michael Oge. Um, oh boy, coming into training camp, it's neutral um, because I don't think any of us expected him to have a big role at all, but he's shown that he's the cornerback right behind the big names. Um, Kareem Jackson. Uh, neutral. He's, he's solid. Although, Ryan, vet day number two for Kareem in six practices. Took a little discount when he got signed, but he uh, negotiated a couple of vet days. That, that was my guess during <laughs> practice, too. Yep, yep. Because uh, <laughs> last time, when he had his first vet day, Von Miller also had a vet day. So it was like, okay, a little bit of a vet day. Today, it was just Kareem. So what's that, like one every three practices? Yep. I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if he said, like, yeah, I'll take this deal, but I'm taking... One out of every three practices off during camp. He took a 50% pay cut. He probably tried to negotiate a 50% 50 (laughs) off practice, and Vic said, I'll give you two of three. 50% (laughs) camp cut. Uh, Where was I? Uh, Caden Stearns. Uh, Trending up. Nice. Um, Kerry Vincent Jr. Uh, Trending down. I mean, he he wasn't around the first week of practice. Okay. Justin Simmons. Uh, neutral. Yeah, it's hard for highest your, paid safety in the league. How do you He's trend up like from it. where you are? <laughs> Trey Marshall. Um, trending neutral. I'm gonna be self serving here. Tedrick Thompson. <laughs> neutral. <laughs> it's better than down. <laughs> yep. Um, Jamar Johnson uh, back out there today on the sidelines. Okay, so yeah. got to be down. Trend, yeah, trending down. Ronald Darby. Um, neutral. He he's been solid. Bryce Callahan. Neutral. Good slot corner. All right, I guess we'll uh, hit these two. Brandon McManus. Neutral. <laughs> Sam Martin. <laughs> Definitely neutral. Jacob Bobbinmoyer. Oh, don't even know who that is. That's the long snapper. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, his long snaps have been good. I call him Bob and Weave. Um, <laughs> all right. Was it, was it, la- no, it wasn't last year. When we, who, who was the center? Oh, it was Connor McGovern who just couldn't get snaps right. Remember how bad that so was? So just, I, I was thinking about this today. <laughs> There's like so, I don't know if it's just the media has gotten a little more used to the Broncos not being as good or if the Broncos are actually better. There's a lot fewer negative narratives coming out of each practice. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that we were talking about how the center can't snap the ball (laughs) to the quarterback. That sounds like it's a joke in the NFL. Yeah, it's an issue. When it was literally, what, there was like a 10-day streak? I think it was the first 10 practices of camp. There wasn't a day without a drop snap. And some of the times it was like two or three a day. Yes. But that that actually just thinking about that made me think of there was one high snap today to Teddy and, and he was able to get it. I mean, he just had to put his hand up. He didn't have to jump or anything. And that's it. I haven't thought of any other one. So Cushenberry doing a good job. And and Quinn Miners with the second team. But isn't it interesting and has to be encouraging that we're not talking about stuff like that? We're yeah. not talking about fights. We're not talking about like inner squad feuds between Emmanuel Sanders and Cortland Sutton. <laughs> yeah. Like all these things. The only thing I don't love is that I heard some people today saying they hated the energy at practice. Yeah. And uh, it was a boring practice because they ran the ball a lot and there wasn't a lot of energy. You, you, you're right on that. And that's something where you kind of thought it'd be the opposite. Yeah. Right? With pads coming on for the first day. You hate that's you. where And temperature 81 degrees out there. I mean, it's not 99. These guys aren't sucked of energy. A little bit, a little bit of a, just a bummer. Yeah. Like this is one where fans were probably saying, oh, first padded practice. That's the one I'm going to. Yeah. And then you got a bit of a stinker. Yeah, you did. And so I would expect tomorrow, the last practice before a day off would be raised energy. Uh, You had, I did see Teddy trying to get the uh, huddle pumped up. They were all jumping up and down for a little bit. 
What did you think of that uh, quote yesterday from Graham Glasgow, who was very honest? We appreciate the honesty. Yeah. He probably uh, regrets his honesty now because it's been talked about everywhere. But he said, essentially, Teddy is more thorough in the huddle. Kind of a, a vet move from Teddy, not not from Graham, but yes. from Teddy and just making sure that his offense isn't going to miss anything, any minor detail while he's in, in especially knowing he's going up against a third-year guy that may miss a detail like that. Now, it wasn't in a shot toward Drew because it wasn't like he, he said, Teddy makes the right calls or it communicates in the huddle better. He just said, Teddy will say things, the snap count one, two, three times. And he said, sometimes we need, we, we need that reminder because we forget. And what was interesting, and I think it was coincidental potentially was yesterday, three times that drew locks offense was out there. They had to rehuddle because something was going on. And the last one drew was pissed mm. about it. He, he wasn't screaming at anyone in particular, but it, didn't seem like he was mad at himself. It seemed like he was mad at someone not knowing something. So you wonder if Drew's going to pick up on that and do what Teddy does. And maybe it's annoying. You know, I, I bug you and May sometimes just about, okay, are we doing this tomorrow? This And, and you know, sometimes it may annoy you guys. No, but it's, I'm like, <laughs> I'm just like Graham. I need the extra reminder. <laughs> well, and, and that's why I do it. And, uh, um, you know, it's, I don't think offensive linemen get upset by that kind of his Graham slide. But I just think that's something where, if your offensive linemen like it, Drew, why not try doing that? So if I'm like one of Drew's buddies, I'm I'm telling him about this. Yeah. I'm saying, hey, just for what it's worth, Graham said that Teddy's a little more thorough in the huddle. Like that's that's like a, maybe a little edge that he has over you that you can easily recapture. Yep. Just by so saying. Easy. And I almost kind of wish Graham, maybe he has. Graham would say it's a Drew. Right. Hey, just so you know, I, I really like the way Teddy's been in the huddle. He's giving us the count three times just to make sure no one screws it up. And Zach, those, while it might be annoying, if you go a game without having a false start, that could be that could be the difference. Yep. I mean, we know how much five yards counts for, whether that's a 50-yard field goal versus a 45-yard field goal, whether yep. it's you, you know, got the first down to move into the red zone or you didn't get that first down, like, there's no reason to not be as right. thorough as possible. Right, and I'll tell you what. Drew's hard count, speaking of trending up, his hard count is trending up. He's got mm. Von Miller a couple of times in this camp so far. Now, he also has got his own players a couple of times. That's certainly not on Drew. That's on those guys. But maybe if he said it one or two more times, then you don't get the false starts and you're only getting guys jumping offside. Yep, love it. Um, all right, before we move on, I want to give a shout. Oh, actually. Yes. We have to get in our DraftKings pick of the week, and then we'll get to the podcast side of things. Ryan, my DraftKings pick of the week, it pisses me off. And oh, uh, the reason for that is DraftKings, I think, put up a very juicy line for all Broncos fans, and it goes to the over-under sack total mm. for Von Miller and Bradley Chubb combined. They got a special going on right now over at DraftKings Sportsbook for Denver Broncos specials. If you go there, you'll be able to find this. Guess what they put the over-under at? for? I guess it's just you can only take the over. At plus 160, guess what the over is set at for uh, Bradley Chubb and Von Miller combined sacks? And I'll give you a hint. It pisses me off. 19 and a half. Oh, my gosh. You cheated. No, I didn't. You cheated. No, I did not. Oh, my gosh. 19 and a half is what it is. Bravo. Congratulations. I'm pretty good at these excellent, things. Excellent line. Yeah, I heard you. Uh, well, we know that you piss Andre off by getting them. So, uh, mm -hmm. wow. Incredible. And the reason why it pisses me off, Ryan, is because why is this the bar for these two guys? No, mm. it, it, I'm not mad at DraftKings. I think you should capitalize yes. on DraftKings by taking the over right here. But when and you talk to people, they say, oh, yeah, if Bradley Chubb or Von Miller, if they get 10 sacks, they'll be good. That's so disappointing in my mind. That's That should be the bare minimum. Yes. The absolute bare minimum for each of those guys should be 10 sacks. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just talked about it. Malik Reed, no disrespect to Malik Reed, had eight last year. Mm -hmm. If you, Led Von Miller or, or Bradley Chubb, both – Top five picks. If you can't get two more than him, yeah. you're not doing your job. Yep. hundred percent. A hundred percent. So that's why, uh, you know, I think that's the line that everyone's setting. So it's probably a good line. I'm probably just out of my mind, but plus 160. And 
one guy could go for 17 and all he needs three from another oh sign me up yeah you're you're really right i like that number the only thing that worries yeah, me you, do. you hit it on the head yes <laughs> the only thing that worries me i'll touch wood here is just health yep just and and that might be baked into it a little I'm bit. I'm sure it is. And look at the past two years. Yeah. One of them has missed a pretty much a full year both years. Yep. Um but if they stay healthy, that should be a lock. Oh, I'd hope so. Great pick. Um I was thinking of going a long term as well. Um, but I, I don't like doing the long term. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say you don't do those often. No, I like instant gratification. Yeah, yeah. Um but I will say I like the over on Jerry Judy receiving yards. Um <laughs> <laughs> that being said. I'm going under in the Rockies game tonight. It's a le- it's at an eleven and a half. Okay. Um, one thing that sports betters have known forever is that teams coming off a road trip, their first game at home for whatever reason, the bats normally don't heat up. Yeah. So eleven and a half uh, seems high. It's not actually high for course field standards, yep. but um, I, there we go. And Drew Creaseman also liked yep. the under here tonight. So I'm going to the game. Wouldn't mind if there's a bunch of home runs and stuff. Um, but I think I think it's going under. Man, versus the Cubs, who who do they have on their team? No one. No oh, one. David <laughs> Bodie, Colorado guy. <laughs> okay, there we go. David Bowie, a, a big time singer. Yes. <laughs> David Bowie. All right, that is going to wrap it up for us on the live side of things. We are going to flip over to the podcast side. You can find that anywhere you listen to podcasts. If you enjoyed this breakdown, hit us with a thumbs up on your way out. That helps us get into more people's uh, algorithms. More people will see this show. Uh, and again. Check out the second half or the last quarter of the podcast uh, over in podcast form anywhere you listen to podcasts. We'll talk to you guys later.